Alberta is moving ahead with a $30 per ton carbon tax on its heavy emitters if they can't cut their emissions by 10%. Tom Rand is managing partner of Arc Turn Ventures. Thanks for being here. Of course. It, this has been, it's been interesting watching this because this is a plan that on the one hand you could say, all right, this is a government that's taking uh, its emissions control seriously. There are those who are already saying, oh, there's a way that the big emitters get off the hook. Uh, and there are others who will say oh, they're not imposing it on yeah. consumers and so it's not going far enough. But so context, what do you, what do we make of this? Well, the, the highest, at the highest level of context is this is the third government in a row in Alberta that has put a price on carbon and is taking the issue seriously to the extent that they politically can. Right. Um, I, but, but imagine sort of a, in terms of the plan itself, imagine if Ottawa had come forward and said, I'm going to punish large emitters and I'm going to let all the suburban drivers in Toronto off the hook. You would have Alberta screaming mm -hmm. and crying about that. And this is exactly what Alberta has done. Um, so, but coming from Alberta, that makes it okay. Um, so the, the, the biggest criticism is, of course, consumers are let, let off the hook. And I think that's a serious, a serious flaw in the plan. Yes. As Mark Jacquard uh, at an UBC has, has consistently pointed out, consumer carbon pricing is the most politically volatile option of our policies to reduce emissions. Right. It is visible. Voters get mad about it. Even if it's revenue neutral, people argue about it. The, the Liberals got away with it in the last election, but it was an issue. So he sort of just said, oh, I'll get rid of that. And, I, and he ran the election on that, so you can't really complain about it. But it does take a whole swath of emissions out. Of the other emissions, there's the electricity sector and there's the big emitters in oil and gas and industry. On electricity, it's actually better than the feds, moderately. Um, the feds sort of forgive coal more than Alberta is forgiving coal. They're a little more stringent from that perspective. On the industrial side, the oil and gas side, the real challenge I have is that if you were a, a good actor in that sector and you had worked hard over the last three or four years to reduce your emissions and you'd invested like Suncor did in some significant emissions reductions technology, yep. going forward you get no credit for that. Right. right. So you're sort of getting penalized and this is what industry really doesn't want. They want to know if I move forward in good faith today and make investments, don't punish me tomorrow for being an early actor. And this is what these right. new policies often do because it's taking every... Will they adjust those do you think as they well, go? We'll hear from these companies obviously. We'll hear from those companies and I, I hope those that have have been good actors step forward and say, I, don't just give me extra rewards, but we need to punish those who haven't been good actors, right? So I think that's a real distinction that needs to, that needs to get, get fixed. I want to hit another story because I mean, one of the, well, before we get to that, actually, I quickly want to just say, would you not agree that when you put a price on carbon, as we did for consumers in Ontario, but make it revenue neutral, it actually yeah. isn't doing the signaling job that it's supposed to do? <laughs> if I know I'm getting this all back, yeah. I'm not going to buy any less yeah. gas. Right. Uh, well, no, that's not true. Um, it's not? No, it's not. If you, if you buy less gas, you, you get richer if you respond to that market signal because you don't get a check. You get a check back, you can go spend it on wine, beer, movies, anything you want. You don't have to spend it on gasoline. I see. So if so, I want to spend it the same, I can, but if I, exactly. don't, if I spend less, I still get extra money. Exactly. I see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I don't think that way. I'm yeah. just going to drive the same amount. Okay. Now let's go to this other story <laughs> that caught our attention, which was uh, this uh, putting a price on carbon and trading carbon. Yeah. We see all of these mechanisms around, right? And it's been patchwork and the interesting thing is watching businesses responding in advance of, of policies which they're doing yeah. California and Quebec have this yeah. uh, trade trading agreement and the US the federal government uh, Donald Trump is now suing California saying that they're kind of contravening federal rules by making yeah. this uh, how serious is I mean this is a White House that's kind of anti-climate I, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I don't know yeah, how to yeah. put it but they're, they're anti everything that would improve our, our situation how serious is this? So suing California because they are getting in the way of the feds in terms of, of policy, policing international agreements because yeah. they happen to be trading a few credits with Quebec just feels vindictive to me. They're just beating up California with everything they can. Poor California's on fire. Uh, it just feels vindictive and, and unconstructive. I mean, honestly, if anybody will tell you, if you have a cap and trade system, the bigger the area that it covers, the cheaper and more efficient it is. So by cutting off trade between California and Quebec, it just makes it more expensive for California. It doesn't do any good. So it just feels right. vindictive. It just feels obstructionist to me more than anything else. So but it won't slow down these kinds, because that's a program that, from what I understand, actually kind of is working. It is. And, and there's actually early outreach in Quebec from some entrepreneurs. They're actually beginning to have outreach to some South American, Central American countries where they're beginning to change farming habits mm -hmm. and so on. And they're generating sort of some credits there. And those credits are sort of voluntarily consumed under the Quebec market. That could actually be country to country. Like, so, you could, so there are ways in which you want to unleash this stuff and it's being curtailed. Tom Rand, great yeah. to have you here. My pleasure. Tom Rand is managing partner at Arc Turn Ventures.